Welcome back, I am the Nerdy Film Girl and this is my special guest as always, Maxfield Applegate. A movie so terrifying, it will bring back all of the PTSD from your childhood nightmares. If you ever <laughs> saw this film as a child, get ready to be triggered. This is... Really, really good. The music got to me in a very certain way. Very certain way. Very certain way. Raggedy Ann and Andy, the musical from 1977. I was born in 87, so along the line, I probably saw this when I was four, five, six, around that age. It was on VHS. My parents picked it up. From the library, the video rental store. Yeah, li little did they know. <laughs> the underground was, um, market. Yeah, yes, exactly. Little did they <laughs> I think it's banned. It's, it should, it like should, a lot of movies should be banned, she's seen. For some reason, I watched it over and over and over again, and I couldn't get enough. A young troubled child. I still have no idea why, after viewing this as an adult, because I just showed it to him. Please stick around to the end. You'll find out the connection to Greece in this film. Yes, you will, and you will be very surprised. What was your experience watching this? A trippy, messed up, far out ride of a lifetime. Really, it just scared me. See, it did. <laughs> it scared the hell out of me. It made me want to rethink my whole life. Yeah, and there's parts of it that are honestly kind of just like nauseating too. Um, Especially the candy scene. A really small recap is like, it's this girl who's like shot live. She's an, a real human. Yeah. Uh, not animated yet. She comes home from school. It's her seventh birthday party, whatever. And she gets like a. Uh, it's like a child. It's a baby just walking around. Yeah, and and you brought up the point that it is kind of like the original Toy Story because like Andy is the kid who doesn't know his toys actually like have lives while he's away. Yeah, influenced by it's reminiscent of yeah. Toy Story. Yeah. So she comes home. It's her birthday party, or whatever, and. While she's enjoying her birthday party, Raggedy Ann and Andy have to save the new doll, which is Babette, this French toy from Paris. Yeah, Babette, la French doll. Yes, yes. Not from Paris. Yes, who's stolen by this creepy other toy. Yeah, he's a captain in a snow globe, and he like peeps, creeps with his spyglass. Yes, on, on Babette the French doll that comes and he decides to like capture her and leave the house. So Raggedy and Andy decide to go like save her and we're still not convinced that they're brother and sister just from their um, interactions from the film. Right, it was a bit odd. Some Star Wars vibes I was getting. Yeah. They were like singing about, oh, I love you. Yeah, there's a very romantic song in there that's very strange when you find out later on. Like we still didn't know and then all of a sudden he's like, I'm your brother, or whatever, and we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Pulling the white stripes on us. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, uh, it, it was bizarre. The film's got just like a lot of creepy, rapey vibes. Um, <laughs> and then like once once they, they Raggedy and Andy leave the girl's room, that's when it gets really bizarre and very yeah. LSD inspired. That's where you're going on your trip, whether yeah. you like it or not. Yeah, they meet this donkey that's like constantly out there. It's like, like Eeyore. Blue, sad. Right, he's like Eeyore, but he has these like <laughs> psychedelic, like visions of going home. Yeah, that's it, when you see him with his eyes going black. Yeah, they're like rainbow colored and trippy, and he sees like all <laughs> these camels in a circle in the sky. It's very strange. You wonder where's he from? Is it like the Middle East or is he a southern hick? Yeah, you were trying to figure out if it was like maybe a Bible reference. Yeah, it seems like what the three wise men came along right. in the desert, like. Toy Story, them getting outside of the house and going to the backyard and the sandbox. You were saying too that a lot of the toys represent different toys in different eras. Yeah. Yeah. There was a Betty Boop style toy, you can think back to the 30s. Raggedy Ann herself and her lover Andy. <laughs> Who's her brother? <laughs> Some weird okay. shit going on there. Yeah. yeah, they sang a whole song. Oh, that song was called Candy Hearts and Paper Flowers. So, let's uh... Yeah, yeah, we can read into so that as much as we'd like. We were trying to ignore that part, but <laughs> yeah. we were like, are we reading into this too much? <laughs> no. There's some very sexual tones to this one. Right, so... The various monsters getting their boners. Yes, so you're, that's exactly a good segue because then the next portion of the movie is them encountering another villain. Yeah. Which is the grossest thing you will ever vile. see. Like it's Harvey Weinstein vile. vile. It's this like blob with 
all types of candy around it and sweets and he's just gobbling it up and Morphing. it's like it's disgusting his whole thing is like he eats and eats and eats but he's not satisfied unless he has a sweetheart and then he starts creeping <laughs> on raggedy ann and she because she says she has a candy heart yeah. whatever the hell that means he wants and wants and he wants. wants it he wants a sweetheart oh my god i thought i was watching like a, like a rape scene like it was so horrifying she uses the r word very liberally but yeah it is it's so bad more like he's prowling after these various girls attempted He's attempted rape just a large <laughs> yeah. large blob person yeah uh, and wouldn't even call him a person he's a monster no it's disgusting and There's then the, like his, his eyes will change and then sometimes his nose becomes like an ice cream cone nose right. or a and clown that's when he nose or a pig like nose really scary yeah it's initially a pig nose which just shows he's like super mm, gluttonous it's and so uh, disturbing to say the least it's yeah. yeah she's not overstating this stuff it's wild and even more of a trip than you expected. Yeah, I feel like you can find that exact scene too on YouTube. Just that scene. We watched the whole film on YouTube because that's the only way to watch it. There's like three formats uploaded. There's three different versions. 35 millimeter print, regular HD upload, and yeah. all new remastered vision. Right. It's and called, I'm, it's like underground, but not. I don't know if any of our parents remember this 1977 release. Oh. I think a different film came out that year about a star and a war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 77 was popular with freaky films for trippy kids. And then there's King Hoo Hoo. Cuckoo. And then there's King Cuckoo. <laughs> the names of these characters don't make sense. No, they don't. Does anything make sense, Nerdy Film Girl? Nothing makes sense. And uh, to get to King Cuckoo, you are taken down this path by uh, tons nights. of cocaine. Like the Canadian currency. Yes. And shining on. <laughs> yeah, and he is like super cracked out and he just takes them into a spiral case of, it's very Alice in Wonderland-esque, they wish, I think, because it's just too out there. Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. One's where a girl is in some sort of dream or journey or right. wild thing where she recognizes things from her environment. And he takes them into this like weird part where like they, everything's black and white. And when they speak, it's just like car honking noises. It's very strange. It's and like the fifth like, dimension or something. Right, almost yeah. a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, very strange, very terrifying for of a child. Of an era as well. Yes. A um, decade for sure. Yeah, he takes them to King Cuckoo, who is the tiniest king in the world. Anytime he laughs, he gets bigger in a part of his body, so his ear will grow for like five seconds and then like go Mario, away. Mario, but a freak. Right, and so everyone around him tries to make him laugh all the time. And I'm like realizing that the villains are, it's all about gluttony in some way or like- Like a real not, king would he, have. Yeah, and like not having enough of something because he wants to get as big as possible by being like, by laughing. Um, which he does not do easily. Right, and then there's this weird tickle scene, which where like the, this like- We can't go there. Glob thing grabs everyone and starts tickling them. And it's so yeah. creepy. Kind of like in Labyrinth, yeah, when she's falling down that well of hands. Let's be real. This yeah. is one of the most dub movies I've ever seen. Um, is it for children? Let's get down to that. Is Let's talk about, 100%. is this a children's film? 100% for children. There's your Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy children's toys. Yes. There's your animated that usually was geared toward children. Reminds me of those 70s animated features that came out like The Lord of the Rings and heavy metal right some movies work for kids and were advertised as such she even had friends that watched it and i was like um i will say i think the score the musical score is actually not bad Grooving. some really good songs in there and, if, and it is very like broadway as types of songs bad. and they're not bad it feels weird for those songs to be wasted on this project i felt like we were at a musical play Right, just a very scary one. Like hair. Oh, well, the, the thing is, like, Wizard of Oz, she wakes up and it was a dream. This, though, it ends very strangely because it splashes back into, like, human world, so, like, actually just footage of, you know, Different dimensions. live action. Yeah. And the, se the girl whose seventh birthday it is goes outside and sees all of the toys in this water filled sandbox 
and it's just we have like, them. Yeah, and she's like, "How did you get in here? And how did you get in here?" It's like so the, the toys just walk out themselves, actually, because that wouldn't happen. You know, that is more Toy Story like, where the toys yeah. can actually move. Do they just talk to themselves and move within their universe, or do they actually exist in our universe, or do they actually exist in our universe? <laughs> And have always been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The character that voices Raggedy Ann is actually Frenchie from Greece, Dee Dee Khan. What? Where have I heard that voice before? Um, apparently she had laryngitis when she sang all the songs for the recording of this movie, so her vocals are very off. The captain uh, character is actually voiced by the same guy that what? voiced the heat miser in all the Rankin Bass. Like Rudolph, Rudolph movies, things. yeah. Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, the year without a Santa Claus, all those. Same dude. All the villains just seem to just be like, don't be <laughs> gluttonous yeah. and greedy, and don't ask for more than you need. Rules for children to follow. One yes. Another. And don't use things to fill voids. That's a big one mm -hmm. too. Places around her house that may be inspiring this nightmare that just fueled a role adventure. Yeah, and actually... So the adventure was actually with Raggedy Ann, so was it through the eyes of this girl? Right. I mean, she's at her birthday party, supposedly, the whole time. But that's the thing, Delirium. too. Like, the child's character is not really developed enough for, for there to give any reasoning for any of this to happen. Very few lines. She's barely in it. And she got her lines dubbed by some other company. Yes! So <laughs> they took this girl who's British and then dubbed all of her lines with an American girl. And I'm like, why didn't they just cast an American actress yeah, to begin with? It was noticeable. I, you have to think, did they need her specific look? Which doesn't make sense because she's barely in it. She probably yeah. has less than two minutes screen time. Like, that's how little she's in this movie. Yeah, I would highly recommend watching this once. You can even speed through it. Never watch it again after that. It is just, it's too much. It's the too word much. Pure evil is an understatement. Yes, and maybe not show this to, to your children. Watch it with friends. Lock your doors. <laughs> yeah. Bundle up. Move your history from your web browser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bundle up, hunker down. Yeah. You're in for a doozy. It's terrifying. I believe a company called Bob's Merrill put this out. Yeah. Kind of like hyphenated Rankin and Bass. By this time, you've stuck around to the end of the video. You made it through, thank you. Hope you're not traumatized from this episode. <laughs> we try not to scare you, but we give you kudos for sticking through to the end. Too. Yes, it's more of a warning uh, than anything else at this point. <laughs> right, this is our disclaimer. <laughs> Do not go through this alone. We're here to help. We are here to help. And if you've seen this movie, please let us know. I need to talk to other people that have seen this movie. Let I, us know in the comments. Yeah, I'm, I, I can't be the only one that has seen this. <laughs> yeah, our childhood was filled with this sort of terror. <laughs> was yours filled with this terror? Was it? Let us know. The musical adventure that has the critics raving. I would give it 11 stars. Rated G. We are so pumped to bring you more content next week. As always, I'm Max Applegate. And I'm Nerdy Film Girl. Please like and subscribe. As always, stay cool, film cats, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, he's not a donkey, he's a camel. Candy hearts and paper flowers. <laughs> we rollin', 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 rollin'. Yes. <laughs>